Thanks for watching the Matt Dollar Show. Today, me and Will are heading to the old Brushy Mountain State Penitentiary, the oldest prison ever in Tennessee. Built in 1896, this was the end of the line for a lot of prisoners in the state of Tennessee. It also had the, the electric chair and death roll. More than 400 prisoners buried on the property here. In 2009, the prison was closed to the public and abandoned. Now, in 2024, this historic building is now starting to be a winery, a brewery, a restaurant, and a tourist attraction here in the state of Tennessee. Today, beside of the, the day tours and night tours that they have, the people who run the Brushy Mountain State Penitentiary is giving me full reign to tour the grounds, video, and bring its historic location to you. So thanks for watching The Matt Dollar Show. So here I am, 11 miles from Petros, where the prison is, and I found a wrecked airplane sitting out here. I just thought that was crazy to be in somebody's yard. It's even got a skeleton in it. This is ridiculous. You just don't see this every day. Way back in the cliffs and the mountains here, setting way off the road, is the Brushy Mountain State Penitentiary. So here we are. We're Arrived. Pulling, pulling through the uh, gate of the prison. It was built in 1896. And something interesting, this prison was actually built by the prisoners. They made them mine and quarry rock out of the, uh, the hills here in the banks. And all these rock and everything that you see was mined out of these hills. So, it's definitely going to be an interesting day. Here we are coming up, and right up there is Brushy Mountain. Well, here we are, guys. We made it to Brushy Mountain State Penitentiary. Hi. Here we are with actual one of the prisoners that was housed here. Tell us a little bit about, about the prison. I lived here in 84, 85, and 86. I come in with a 10 year sentence. I get out two and a half on the day. I'm from Cumber County, across from Tennessee. Lake Tangy Resort back home in Cumber County where I'm from. March of 83, I walked the country club in Lake Tangy. I blew it up a dynamite. I done for the money. I done for the money. 
So today we're we're really where you work, right? Yeah. This used to be our main shed back in the day. Oh, really? And now, now, now look at it. <laughs> yeah, you never thought it would be like no, this. No, I never dreamed in a million years we'd be back up here telling a story one day. Right. This is my therapy after all this. I'm sure it's been 40 years ago when I come here. 40 years. Yeah. Well, we're going to take a little tour here of the prison today. And thanks for watching. So here we are. Uh, the guy, George, that we just interviewed actually now has keys to the prison believe it or not that just goes to show you how your your time and your life can change so he's going to uh, actually unlock the prison for us right now come in uh-huh come to that side of the port over there okay used to be guard shack up through here that's called the white building that's a really old building what's that building over there Minimum security security and this is our red building that's minimum security that's our hilton out there, we got bunk beds with springs, no doors on them. And here it says iron beds. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So George is going to uh, unlock the door for us up here. And again, he never thought he would have the keys. I never dreamed in a million years I'd have a daggum key to the daggum thing. I hear. There's the guard tower. One of them, yeah. I guess. Now yeah. there's three sides to this wall, right? Yeah. First you mount's only prison in the world. With three walls. Because one One's is the mountain. The mountain. One of yeah. the mountains. Where it is. What I'll do is I'll unlock it. And then later we'll open it all up and everybody gets in that way. This way they come out. There. Okay. Uh, now picture I unlock the main door there to go in. So that was the warden's office, the one you showed the air conditioner down there? Yeah, he was probably the only one with the air conditioning, yeah. probably. See, back in my day, we didn't have no air conditioning. We had a fan. Well, I bet it was hot in here, wasn't oh, it? Oh, yeah. I'm going to show you in the winter of 85, where it got so cold, uh -huh. my blanket froze the wall. That's how that gum cold it was. Wow. See that big chimney out front? Uh-huh. That's where the boilers are. So the steam pipe, if you look, you see where it's run above ground. Uh-huh. When they come into prison, they run underground. Wow. Yeah. This is the visitation area. So here we are walking through Now James Earl Ray was in 16. These are going upwards, so it's probably going to be in the on the other side. So we're going to walk around here. This brings us out on the yard. So you can see here, this is the prison yard out here. Now when James Earl Ray was here, this is a three-sided yard. And he escaped on that wall right back there. You've got a wall there, a wall here, a wall behind me, and over there's the cliff. Let's go in here and see if we can't find 16. Shoot. Okay, yeah, here's 19, 18, 17, and 16. This was his cell. And that's where he laid his head and lived. So that's where he was. He 
James Earl Ray, the killer of Martin Luther King Jr. This is the main room here. If you want to just give me a minute and I'll come back so I'm gonna get the latch and everything turned on everything. Alrighty. George has gone to see some of his guests and we're going to check out some of the cells. So right here, guys, is where they would take a shower. And you can see it's just right out Right out here next to their their sails. This is terrible. You can see that this was not a, a good place to be at all. It's cold. He said there was no heat that he would wake up in the mornings and his blanket would be frozen to the wall. And then in the summertime, it was so hot they couldn't stand it. I can only imagine. Will, what do you think about the reality of walking down through there? You walk through here, this would be your last walk. This would you can be see up here it's a cage too. Yeah. They said that the miners would, they would double book it. They would do a shift, 12 hour shift, so they could double book the sales in here. Then you come out here. back side of these the back side of the building I was just in we're gonna go upstairs now it's quiet here now but I'm sure at one time Oh yeah. Look how small these hallways are. Now can you imagine walking down through here, being a guard or a visitor, and prisoners reaching out Spending years in one little cell. Mm -hmm. And that's their view. They can't see out the window. The windows are either painted or so dirty you can't see out of it. In here is the cafeteria. Walls are painted with murals where prisoners had painted them. I guess to give them projects to do. Back in here is where they would actually get their food. Right here is where they would go by this window. 
get their trays, get their food. Just imagine your only view when you could see out the window is other people that's housed and in prison. Now we're coming up on what's called D block. This is life and maximum security. This part was built in 1957 by the state of Tennessee. Uh, Governor Frank Clement, Department of Corrections. This is the maximum security. This is where they'd get their mail. Their commissary would be dropped off right here. Boy, this is bad. You can only imagine. You can feel it in your bones. Fill it in your bones in here. How these guys had to live. It's crazy they gave me full access in here today to uh, look, touch, feel, Whatever I need to do, there is no way I'd come in here at night. trying the doors but I keep forgetting now I'm out of prison <laughs> if you look right here you'll notice there's a sliding lock system they would pull a lever back there and it would unlock all the doors and then each individual door would have a key boy the maximum security there they're very, very small. You have a sink back there, which is, doubles as a commode and a sink. You have a very small writing desk and a bed, and that's it. And you would be locked in these cells 23 hours out of 24 hours in a day's time. And that's where you'd be. And your only view out of here 
is this. You can't see. The only thing you can tell is if it's daylight or daylight or dark by the looking at the, the windows that you can't see out of. This is the lock. And what you do right here is a guard would put his key in here, turn a lock, and move his lever, and that would open the door system for inside of the cells. Once that's done, they go by and unlock the doors one at a time. This was the guards area right here. That's where the guards would work and have their office. And that's D block. So now if you leave D block and you look it through there, that's called Supermax. They built that in 1985. And uh, George said that's where all the, the newer prisoners would have went. And we're gonna check that out next. So this is where they would have done their activities. Go right in there, Will. We'll see. We finally found a door we can shut. Well, I thought we could. Ah, they've got it fixed so I can't lock you in there, Will. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. Definitely a lot of fighting and stuff going on in this room, I bet. We're back out here on the yard. And this was the gymnasium. Go in there and check that out. All right, so here we are. I found the old gymnasium. I'm sure this is where the guys would play basketball and try to keep in shape. Be a great place for an Elva show. Here we are, now this is the Supermax. There's the, uh, the cliff. That's the back wall of this place. Walk up here to the top of the steps and see what I can see. Boy, you know, imagine looking at that every day thinking how bad you'd like to be at the top of that hill and out of here this guards tower what's good about having this private access today is I can just walk around I'm literally out here on the yard where James Earl Ray used to walk trying to figure out how to get out of here <laughs> and it was right there at that wall is where he escaped so right over there is where he was at that wall he escaped with a homemade ladder made out of pipe This is all closed down. This is the Supermax. So here we are. This is where they did their laundry. You can see that's where they would iron the uh, 
guards, uniforms, and, and all that stuff. This is a machine here that would actually take a shirt and steam it. See here, Will? You'd put a shirt over that and it would steam it to make it nice and flat. Take it in there and when it came out, it'd be pressed. So back in there is their great big washing machines and dryers that they used. There's all the equipment. So this is the area right here that they would call the hole. And they would punish you and you would come in here and do something that you shouldn't have done. This is where you would have been put at. And these are the sails for the hold. Oh my God. Put you in here and hold you. Say if you got 10 days in a hole, this is, this is where you'd be. Hey William. These doors don't lock. I've already tried them. Go right here. Look at this bed. Lay down on that bed. On the bottom one. 10 by 10. No, it's not 10 by 10. You're in a 10 by 4. <laughs> 10 by 4? Yeah. Lay down there. So that's what William would look like if he was in the hole for being late for work. That's where he'd end up. This right here would be our little view here out of our prison cell. You can put your arms out and reach and touch both walls. It's four foot wide and ten foot deep. God almighty. Look at this one. So hi, thanks for watching the Matt Dollar Show. Here I am today at Russian Mountain State Penitentiary. And this is Randy. What's your last name, Randy? Human. And so you were an actual guard here? I worked here when I was 10 years it was old. What was that like? Well, it was definitely different. Oh, I'm sure. A lot of people I've noticed in this town, a lot of people work here at the prison, right? A lot of people in Petron say did work here. A lot of people in Morgan County itself worked here. We had some come in both counties and that, but most, the majority of the workers was from this county, Morgan County, Scott County, Fentress County especially. So if you had to name the worst part about working here, what would you think it would have been? Well, it's really hard to say. I worked, high security is pretty, had bad inmates up there, but it's all locked up between three hours. Is this up in the newer part? It's up in the new part of the yeah. hill. Yeah. Uh, any place here, basically, on the yard out here, you didn't know what to expect at any time. And actually, you worked in Chow Hall. Yeah, they made sure that was unclassified. Come into the county jails, come to us. And you didn't know anything about them? Didn't know whether it's minimum, medium, max, or what. Just had to deal with them. Just had to deal with them one on one. We have about 100, 110, 120 mates in there at a time. How many was in the prison at one time? Normally we average right around 600 to 650 in there. Awesome. Well, awesome. Yeah, back, awesome. back years ago, we find coal here back up to probably up to mid 60s. We had as much as 1,200 inmates. Wow. Hey, uh, I know like they had a lot of famous people like James Earl Ray that was here. Uh, and I guess he was probably in several cells throughout the prison throughout the yeah, He lived in about every place here at one time or another. B block, A block, B block, or we C block. Different places. Well, we sure appreciate it. And we appreciate, we appreciate you. It. And God bless you. And thanks for watching the Matt Dollar Show. Thanks,
Hey, my name's Larry Wright. I was a correctional officer here at Brushy for 32 years. What I'm gonna show you now is the uh, ladder that James Earl Ray used in 1977 for his escape. Now the ladder was actually longer than what this is now, but some of the straight sections have been removed out of it, uh, so it would fit in the display case. Uh, when James escaped, there were seven of them that went over the wall. And they were all caught within 72 hours. 72 hours? 72 hours. And it wasn't they somewhere in the, around the mountains here, I guess, wasn't they? Yeah, they all, <clears throat> they all stayed pretty much in the mountains. One was caught in Oak Ridge, uh, walking up the highway, uh -huh. uh, city of Oak Ridge. But uh, all of them were pretty much caught here inside the mountains. James uh, Earl was? James only got six miles. Six miles? Six miles and 54 hours. He should have planned it a little bit better, huh? Well, he should have, yeah. <laughs> You thought that he would have anyway. So this is him here, I guess. Yeah, this is a picture of James. Now this is an early picture before he came here to Brushy. And what are these paintings? These are paintings that uh, James did in the sale. Uh-huh. And you know, signed his name to him. Oh yeah, I see that right there. It's quite the artist. He had, he yes. had plenty of time, didn't he? On his yes, hands. and then the other, the, the picture here, this was one of the deputy wardens that was on. Uh, and that's him with this time. pipe. Isn't and it? that's him with this ladder. And you can tell by the way he's holding it, that ladder's actually longer. Yeah. And that goes back to me saying a minute ago that the uh, straight sections were removed. That's a shame, isn't it? Half of a pair of scissors. Wow. And then you can't tell, but <clears throat> the kid in the background is James when he was a kid. Oh, yeah, right. Cover there. of Life magazine. Wow. We sure appreciate you, sir. Uh, and, uh, no problem. None whatsoever. I'd be glad to help you work. I'm leaving here a free man. Hello, my name is Larry Wright. I'd like to thank you for watching the Matt Dollar Show. Thank you.